Hey leader, David Burke is here, organizational psychologist, author of four best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about the signs of a toxic company culture. You know, I believe that work is too important to our lives to drag us down. Work matters too much to let it just suck. And I'm on a personal mission to make work not suck. And one of the things I constantly get in the form of emails and comments on videos, et cetera, is how do I know before getting into an organization whether or not it's a toxic organization, whether or not it's a toxic company culture? And I also get messages about I'm a leader inside a toxic organization. Uh, what do I do? How do I identify what's causing that toxicity. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the six signs of a toxic company culture, and maybe even uh, some of the ways to identify them and how to, at the very least, mitigate them, maybe even turn them around. Let's get started. So the first sign of a toxic company culture is a top-down leadership style. Now, we've known, and there's very little debate about this at this point, that the best leaders are more servant leaders, are more transformational leaders. We've known that leaders who use their power in the service of others in the organization and incorporate and empower others to make decisions, to go after their objectives, who set the mission and then let people closer to execution make the determination on that. But there are still a ton of top-down micromanaging, I get to decide leaders. In fact, the worst version of top-down leadership in terms of a toxic company culture would be a top-down leader who thinks that they are a servant leader. All right, and the end result is that people want to feel empowered. There's lip service toward empowerment, but in actuality, the empowerment you get is the power to guess what's on the leader's mind and execute that. And if you can't guess often enough, you're out, right? You're fired. That's an incredibly dangerous style for a number of different reasons, but one of the biggest is that people won't become engaged in the work. It's not their decision. They're just being told what to do. And maybe if you pay them enough, you might find enough people who are willing to take the high pay and the total lack of engagement and ability to think and the total lack of personal meaning towards the work. Maybe that'll work out for you, but I doubt it. And so we wanna get rid of this top-down style. And if you're in an organization where you can't do that right away, maybe you can help your own team make more collaborative decisions, right? Maybe you can insulate them from that top-down leadership style and seek to give them a little bit more power even if you can't change senior leadership. That can act as a bit of a buffer to the toxicity of top-down leadership. Now the next sign of a toxic company culture is information hoarding people or departments keeping vital information to themselves. Whether that is you know, private information, history about past clients, about decisions that are coming up, et cetera, or whether that's information almost in the form of access, right? Like the ability to get on the company servers and access all files versus a small. The ability to know the password to the copier. I mean, I, I don't understand. Presumably you work in an office that has locks and the ability to keep outsiders out of the organization. So I don't even understand why so many organizations have a password to their copy machine and that sort of stuff. We saw the dangers of information hoarding happen even further over the last 18 to 24 months as more people are working in it, it, remotely, are working from home, et cetera. And if information's not flowing freely, then work gets stagnated. But it's dangerous in any organization, even a fully co-located one, even if it's heading back and everybody's coming back to the office. That danger of information hoarding means that people are not fully informed when they're making decisions. People are actually being kept from information that might change their decision. And why are they doing it? Usually because you've got too much of a compete against each other, a too much of a cutthroat who's gonna get the next promotion culture, and that's not a recipe for collaboration. A little bit of friendly rivalry is okay. People thinking that I have to shove other people down in order to get that next promotion, that's dangerous, that's toxic. And if you can, seek to mitigate that and make sure that information has flowed freely inside your organization and fight inside of your team and with other teams to get your people the information that they need even if other departments are hoarding it. The next sign of a toxic company culture is a default to the status quo. We've always done it this way, right? This assumption that the world is not gonna change, that the competitive landscape is not gonna change, or even that the people inside the organization is not going to change is dangerous, right? It leads to stale minds and poor decisions. It leads to a toxic company culture, but it also leads to their maybe not being a company in the next decade because it couldn't compete and it couldn't change 
fast enough. Why is this toxic? Obviously, you want people who are the smartest and most engaged and most motivated inside your organization, and they're going to see things that need to be changed. And if you're defaulting to the status quo and you're not allowing them to make the case that we need to stay competitive by changing this, those people are gonna get frustrated, demotivated, they may leave, or they may turn into just another bureaucrat that is helping the default to the status quo and making the situation even worse. So be willing to hear other people's ideas. Be willing to, they, you don't have to accept it. You just have to make sure people feel heard and are open to the idea, and everyone is open to the idea that we're gonna change. We're gonna change our business model. We're gonna change who we're reporting to. We're gonna need to change a lot of things because the only constant is change. The next sign of a toxic company culture, this might be my favorite one, is what I call recreational complaining. Recreational, in other words, complaining as like a pastime, as a favorite company hobby. And you know what I'm talking about, right? The people that meet up at the water cooler, at the coffee machine, or down in the lobby, and everything they say is a complaint, right? Now, if it's just one person in an organization, then you've got a toxic person. You don't have a toxic company culture. But if the vast majority of people can find time to complain, and complain to people who cannot change it, right? Complaining to your boss or complaining to senior leadership about something that you see that's wrong, that's not necessarily a problem. Complaining to other peers, all of whom have no ability to change it and really only the ability to pat each other on the back and go, yes, we're victims, this is a big problem, but we're not gonna do anything about it, we're just gonna keep complaining for fun. That's a huge sign of a toxic company culture. And that is something you can't allow yourself or your team to fall prey to. It's okay to complain, it's okay to criticize, but it has to be criticism in the service of positive forward momentum, a positive change. If it's just recreational complaining, it needs to stop. The next sign of a toxic company culture, quick excuses. When things go wrong, when there's a failure, when a project comes in over budget or, uh, or past deadline or, or not at all, when projects fail, if people are quick to make excuses, quick to ship, blame, quick to blame other people, that is a sign of a toxic organizational culture. A culture that knows that failure is feedback, a culture that knows that it's okay to fail is not a culture of quick excuses. It's a culture of shared learning. It's a culture of psychological safety. It's a culture where people feel like it's okay to share their setbacks because there's a lesson inside and everyone gets better when we share that lesson. Right? The opposite of that is quick excuses, quick blame shifting, and a, and a desire to get all of the spotlight off of me so I can just keep putting in my time, getting my incremental promotions, incremental raises, et cetera. Uh, quick excuses is a sign of a culture of fear, and we want the opposite. We want a culture where people don't feel afraid of failing because they know that failure is feedback and that everybody gets better when we pull the lessons of that feedback out and share it across the whole organization. The final sign of a toxic company culture, and this is a hard one to see from the outside looking in, but from the inside, it's pretty easy to notice, top performer turnover. Turnover in an organization is okay. Every industry, every organization is gonna have some level of turnover as a result of life changes, as a result of changes in the business model, right? Just that's okay. Different industries, it's different, and you don't wanna be too far off the norm, but if you're in the norm, it's okay. What's not okay is if the majority of people, even in that tolerable amount of turnover, are top performers. If your most talented people are constantly the ones that are leaving, that's a sign. That's a sign that the work is boring. It's not sufficiently engaging. The mission doesn't actually inspire anyone. Maybe there is no mission, but more importantly, it's a sign that those people don't feel the freedom and autonomy to do their best work. And rather than put up with it and rather than bother to fight for that, they've just chosen to leave. Right? That means they feel that there is so much resistance from defaulting to the status quo, top-down leadership style, or, or any of the other toxic signs. They feel like there's so much complaining, so much toxicity, and so much resistance to great performance that their easiest course of action is to leave. And that's a problem. That's a problem you're not gonna solve right away. But if you can point to the other five that we've talked about, maybe you can turn it around. Right? If you can create a shield, a buffer on that top-down leadership style, if you can ban recreational complaining, if you can make sure that information isn't hoarded, if you can do all the things we talked about, the first five elements of a toxic company culture or signs of a toxic company culture, maybe you can mitigate top performing turnover on your team. Maybe that means your team performs even better. Maybe that means you arrive at a leadership role that could actually help turn the company culture around and turn it into one that helps everyone do their best work ever.